Hi there, and welcome back to BoardBee. Now, the last thing we did before our break was to save our project. So let's start by opening up Nestmaker again. And this time, we'll choose Load Project. There's our project file. So let's open that. And here's our game. So the thing now is that we have a working game technically. The game is technically working, but it's very boring. Nothing happens and uh, Ghost Hunter Pete can't move. So let's focus on that. Let's focus on the inputs this time. So what do we have here? We have our player and we have all our background tiles. So all we need is uh, for for uh, Ghost on Repeat to have a way to move. Now, in order to do that, we need to go to scripts down here. We need to import some scripts to our project. So go to scripts and input scripts. Now to do this might feel a little strange because um, you don't click any import buttons. But just highlight input scripts here and then you go to the right here to where it says base 4.5. Double click on that, double click on game and here's where it can get a little confusing because there are several folders in here and unfortunately we have to mix a little of, of uh, some scripts from this folder and some scripts from that folder but I'll uh, guide you through it. So let's start by going to this folder called input scripts. So double click on that. So what we need from here is our most basic scripts. That's move left right here in the middle. So in order to input that just double click on it. When you double click on it, it appears down here under input scripts. So let's do the same thing with move right. Double click on that. And we need one more script from this folder, and that's this one. Stop moving. So double click on that as well. So now we have three scripts under our input scripts folder. So now we need to go back. So double click on DIR. And now we need to go to our Metro uh, Metroidvania folder. So mod Metroidvania. Double click on that one. And double click on inputs. Okay. So we are making a game in the Metrovania module, but we don't need all of this. So let's uh, take this top one, change action to jumping, double click on that one, double click on the change icon to uh, change action to moving, unless jumping. So double click on that one, change action to stop. Yes, we need that one as well. Uh, and for this game, I don't want these ladder scripts. But let's take this last one. Shoot projectile scrolling. So double click on that last one as well. So now we have um, seven scripts in our input scripts folder. So let's just start with that. Uh, no, wait a minute. We actually need a little bit more. So go to DIR, double click on that. And one more time. We need something from the platformer base folder. So go to this one, double click and double click inputs. So we need to borrow some scripts from the um, uh, platform base module. Uh, let's see, I need to use my cheat sheet. We need uh, this one right here so that says jump through plat. So this is a script that lets the player jump and uh, jump through 
uh, some platforms. So double click on that one and double click on var jump down at the bottom. Var jump stands for variable jump. I'll show you more later. Okay, now we can make something happen. So, if we take a look down here, all these scripts are now imported into our project. If we go down here, where it says input editor, this is a great thing about Nestmaker because it makes this very visual. So that's great. And the first thing we'll need to do, we need to say something about our game state. Now we haven't talked about game states yet, but uh, if we take a look at this list, you can see that we have main game, start screen and win screen. Let's not worry too much about this for now. Let's just remember that main game, that's our main, that's the gameplay. That's where you are, uh, when you are in the levels. So main game and target already says player, so that's okay. And controller one, so that's uh, correct. Let me just show you real quick on the target. You can choose other objects here, but that can get a little confusing. So for now, let's just focus on moving the player. So game state, main game, player, controller one. Sounds great. Okay, now the cool thing about this is that you can actually push the buttons that you want to affect. Now, right now, I want to make something uh, that lets me control my player, lets me move him left. So let's just click left on the D-pad. And down here you see there's a button that says press. If you press this button, it will change. Now it says hold. Press it again and it says release. So you need to be careful about this when you add scripts. Because right now we want to, uh, to uh, choose a script and assign it to this action. This is, what going, is it what's going to happen when I press left on my D-pad in my main game. So, what script do we, do we want to run? Well, I want him to move left. Very simple. Okay, and now just add this script. And this is pretty easy to, to read. You can see that main game, press L, L for left, and then we'll run this script. But, what happens when I release left my d-pad. Let's click this button here until it says release. When I release the left of my d-pad, I want the player to stop moving. So let's add that as well. Okay, now let's do the same thing for right. So click right on the d-pad and remember we want press for this one. So press right on the d-pad, then I want the player to move right. So let's add that script and uh, let's do the same thing as we did for left. When we release right, we want the player to stop moving. Like that. Okay, we can actually test our game right now. And that's going to give us uh, an opportunity to do something else as well. So when you test your game, just use this button that says export and test here on the top. And we can see we have our first error message. Now this can be a little annoying because default in Nestmaker, uh, the jump script has, uh, in the jump script code, it says play a sound. We don't have any sounds yet, so that's uh, something that can be a little annoying, but let's just fix that right now. Now you can see if you get an error message, you'll get this one, this uh, message as well. So now 
the game is not working. Fortunately, it's a very, very simple fix for this. So let's go to the jump script right there. Jump through plat. Now, um, I didn't pause the script, but I remember that it says it said that the error was on line 77. So what's on line 77? This one, right here. This one that says play sound, SFX thump. But we don't have that sound, and that's why we get that error message. So what we're gonna do right now is that we're gonna uncomment, uh, no, we're gonna comment this uh, sentence out. What does that mean? Well, as you can see here, when you write a semicolon in the code, everything after that semicolon is a comment. So Nestmaker doesn't care what's after the semicolon. And you can see all text af after semicolons are marked in green. So all this text marked in green, Nestmaker will ignore. So what we'll do right now is we'll write a semicolon in front of play sound like that and it turns green and we'll click save so now let's export and test our game and we didn't get any error messages okay now the second thing we need to do right now if you're going to use a physical controller, if you have a USB controller, then we need to bat map uh, the controller to the emulator. The way we do that is to go to Options up here, Input, and where it says Player 1 Standard Controller, let's click Setup here. Now, as you can see, if you don't have a physical controller you can use the keyboard and then we can use these keys on the keyboard W for up a left D right and so on I want to use this one so I'm gonna map the controller so I'll just click up here and then I'll click up on my controller and we have mapped our first uh, input on the d-pad let's do the same thing for left click right and then click right on the uh, physical controller and down click select and click select on the controller same thing for start click B click A and there we go now we have mapped a controller to the emulator click OK and OK once again OK so the moment of truth. Can we control Ghost Hunter Pete? Yes, we can. When I press right, he moves right. When I release right, he stops. What about left? Yeah. And as you can see, he's even changing direction. So everything's working great right now. Okay, good. Now, this isn't exactly what we want. Well, it is what we want, but we're not done yet. So let's close our emulator. And let's go back to input editor down here. So we can move our player left and right, but I want them to, um, I want to show the animation as well. So in order to do that, again, main game, and um, if you remember, we said press L to move the player left. Now we're going to have to do something else when you press left as well. So click left here, make sure it says press. And we'll have to choose another script that says change action to moving unless jumping. Change action to moving. Let's choose that one. That's what we want to run when we press left. So click Add Script. And I like to group uh, these together 
so we don't get confused later on. Because this is the same action as this. Both of these are pressed left. So when I want both, both of these uh, things to happen when I press left. So I'm going to move this one up. So I have these two together, like that. So when I press left, the player is going to move left and he's going to change his uh, action or animation to moving. So that's perfect. But I don't want them to keep moving. I don't want the animation to keep moving when I uh, stop the player. So we're going to have to add something for that as well. So make sure it's on left here and click the press button until it says release. Now when I release left on my d-pad, I want to change the action to stop. Stop, that's our idle animation. So let's add that and let's group it together with the other release left. So now we have two press left, two release left. One for start moving and one for stop moving. And we have handled both the movement and the animation. But we need to do the same thing for right. So click right on the D-pad and make sure it says press here. And uh, we don't need move right, we already did that. But we need him to change action to moving. So press right, change action to moving. Add script. And let's move this up until there we go now we have press right press right press right to start moving right press right to change animation to moving and the same thing for release so just click the button until it says release then we want to change action to stop unless jumping so choose that change action to stop release right yes add script okay so now we have two for press l two for release l two for press r two for release r okay great let's test this okay now if we did everything right now, our player is going to move and he's going to do the move animation. So let's take a look. And he does. And when I release, he stops and the animation stops as well. So great. Now the problem is our little guy can't get out of this pit right now. So why don't we give him the ability to jump? So, I want the A button to be my jump button. So press A on the controller and make sure it says press here. So when we press the A button, I want to, to run this script, jump through plat. So just add that script right here. Let's test this. You know what? Let's add the... the um, well, let's just test it for now. I'll show you. I'll show you something in a second. Okay, can we jump? Yes, we can. Okay. So the thing is, I want him to be able to jump higher. So let's leave the controller for just a second and go back to our player on the game objects. So go to game objects and click player. And on the player we click object details. Let's go to the details tab over here. So I want them to move a little bit faster. So I'm going to set 
27 for normal max speed. But for jump speed, I'm going to move this slider up until it says 50 55, that's fine. Let's try, try that. So normal max speed 27, jump speed 55. Let's test that. Okay, my player is moving a little faster right now and he can jump higher. I don't know if you, if you can see it, but when I'm jumping left and right, he's walking in the air. I don't want that. If you remember, when we set up our player, we made uh, an animation state here for jumping right and jumping left. So jump right, that's this one. And that's just one frame. So I want him to be like that while he's in the air and going to the right so let's close our game objects for now and let's go back to our input editor down here now again game state main game and let's choose the a button and make sure it says press and now let's change the action to jumping a script that says change action to jumping and let's add that as well so now when you press the a button he's actually gonna jump the sprite is gonna jump at the player and uh, he's also going to have his jumping animation so let's test to see if it works Okay, let's see. Yeah. So when I jump now, he's not walking when he's in the air. Yeah, so this is perfect. This is almost starting to look like a game. And let's also notice that the collisions are working. If you remember when we set up our tiles, we said that we wanted solid tiles around here, there, and here. So everything's working great right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little adjustment here on my player. So let's go back to game objects, player. Let me show, show you something. Now I said that this was the animation speed and it is but only for the preview. So right now, uh, let's choose the walk animation. This is what my walk animation looks like. But the real animation speed is under object details, actions, and if you remember these action steps, action step one, is the walk animation and it says three right now now the strange, th strange thing here is that the lower numbers are faster and the higher numbers are slower it actually says so right here fast and slow I want my animation to go a little faster so I'm gonna go from three to two like that for my walk animation and we, uh, when we have chosen walk here, that's both left and right. Because we set up our animation type here and chose walk, left for, uh, walk right for right and walk left for left under animation, uh, the animation tab right here. Okay, let's close our little guy for now. And one more thing. Now a player can jump, that's great, but 
I want my player to be able to jump just a little bit. Sometimes you want a full jump, but sometimes you just want a little jump. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our input editor. And again, choose main game for game state. And this is jumping, so it's still the A button. But instead of press, you're going to choose release. So when you press the A button, the player is going to jump. But when you release it, something else is going to happen. So let's choose script to run var jump. That's the variable jump. So what this does is that the moment you release A, he stops moving up and it starts falling down. So if you just lightly tap the A button, he's just going to jump to a tiny little jump. And if you hold down the A button for a fairly long time, he's going to move up, uh, jump up to a max uh, height and fall down. So let's test this out. A release var jump let's add this script okay and let's test it so press a he's doing a full jump but what if i tap a red button Full jump, yeah, it's working great. I can just tap the A button and he, he's doing a small jump. Hold down the A button, he's doing a full jump. Okay, great. And I'm happy with the uh, animation speed. So everything's great so far. Yep, this is perfect. So let's close this. Now, this is fine. This is perfect. Everything's working great right now. But it's still kind of kind of boring, to be honest. So let's go back to our overworld up here. Now, this is a scrolling game. Remember that. So in order to scroll, we need several screens across. I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to do three screens. And uh, to be kind of lazy, I'm going to copy this one. So put your cursor up here over this screen and press Control C. Move your cor cursor uh, one uh, tile to the left, to the right, sorry, and press Control V. So now we just copy this screen from here to here. And uh, Let's uh, let's go into this new screen right here. Now the cool thing in Nestmaker is that you can actually see the screen to the left right here. I want the ground to line up with that one. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to these tiles up here and I'm going to choose our first one, the upper left one. That's the light blue one. And I'm just going to paint over this. To remove this one like that and I'm going to choose this sand tile with the grass on top for this and I'm going to press escape to get a clean tile here okay two things now two things first of all do you remember collision if I press this collision button up here you can see that it says 1 all the way down here. Now what was that? What was number 1? Well, when it says number 1, that's a solid tile. So if we go over here to collision and uh, click our pull down menu, you see we have 0, that's the null walkable. That's nothing. But number 1, that's solid. So if I click solid here and uh, click zero on my keyboard right now, 
I placed a solid tile right in the middle. Now, obviously, I don't want that right now. So let me choose a null walkable and press zero to erase that. And what you can do is that you can hold down zero. So hold down your zero key and just move your mouse down to paint over these one collisions. Like that. Okay, that's great. Because if we didn't do that, then obviously a player would stop because there would be an invisible wall there. Very annoying. But there's another, another problem. You can see here that it says zero right here. So what's going, ha what's going to happen right now is that when our player gets here, it's going to fall right through here. It's going to fall down to the screen below. I don't want that. So I'm going to choose solid from the collision menu and place my cursor over here and press zero like that okay so now we have one all the way across so it's solid all the way across here so this, uh, this is going to work fine now let's click the collision button again to remove these numbers but there's another problem these are these are blue I don't want them to be blue so let's take a moment just to uh, to take a look at the palettes so this is my sub palette one it says sub one this is sub palette two three and four now every screen has four palettes it can uh, choose from so for this screen i can choose these palettes now if you see right next to the sub palette number where it says sub one there's a q there and for sub 2 there's an W, sub 3 there's an E, and for sub 4 there's an R. So what does that mean? Well, those are actually keys on your keyboard. So if I place my cursor right here and I press Q on my keyboard, I get this palette. And uh, if I press W, I get this one. And that was uh, correct already. So what happens if I press E? We should see a gray tile. We do. And if we press R, we get this one. So obviously I don't want it to look like this. So what we can do, we can paint all of this very easily. I'm going to hold down my W key on my keyboard gonna hold on W because I want this palette for these tiles so place your cursor over here hold down W and just move your mouse across here like that yeah I think that looks fine now I want this screen to look a little more interesting so what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this area down in the right corner so just hold down your shift button and drag your mouse down here so you have selected this area and press ctrl C to copy it and move it one tile up like that ctrl V to paste and let's do that again Hold down Shift. Let's do this. Hold down Shift and just drag down here. Control C. And I'm going to move this one tile up like that. So when we do this, we don't just copy the graphics. We also copy the collision. So to test if it looks okay, we can press this collision button again uh, yeah it looks mostly okay now I'm a little paranoid when it comes to this I don't want the player to glitch through here now normally that's not gonna happen because when it hits uh, one tile from the side or from the, the, the top he's going to stop but just in case 
I'd like to have solid in the corners here as well. So I'm going to make sure I have solid on the on the, the collision menu. And I'm going to place my cursor here and press 0. And the same thing for this. Press 0. Don't get confused. We're pressing 0 on the keyboard and we get the 1 here. It's the 0 key that's just to, to, to um, paint collision. It has nothing to do with this one. So zero key, that's for painting collision. Okay, yeah, this looks great. This looks great. So, let's just make one more screen. So let's copy this one. Just hold your mouse over it, press Control C. Move your mouse one tile to the right and Control V. Now you can see already that we need to do some adjustments over there. So let's go into our new screen. And now let's do this uh, the right way. Let's first of all choose the palette we want. I want this one. And then I want this sand tile with the grass on top. So I'm going to click that one. And I'm going to continue from the screen on the left. You can see there. So I'm just going to place two tiles like that and yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to choose the sand tile. I still have this palette selected. So with the sand tile, I'm just going to paint it like that and I have to fix that. Okay, there we go. Now, you know what, let's... Uh, now it's fine. Okay, so it's time to check collision again. How does collision look right now? So press the collision button on top. Okay, this is not great. You can see it says zero down here. So remember, these tiles up here, they are just graphics. They don't have any collision. So now we're painting collision manually. So, just choose solid from our menu, collision menu up here. And if you can see the tiles down here, just hold your mouse over and press zero. I'm gonna hold down zero now. And just drag my mouse along the ground like that. There we go. Now, these ones under here are uh, not necessary. So I'm gonna erase them. I'm going to choose null from collision menu. I'm just going to hold down my zero key and just drag it across like that. Yeah, this is fine. So now we have ones all across the ground like that. Okay, great. So now we have three screens. Now we're able to scroll. Right now, we can't do that. Why? We haven't told Nestmaker to scroll yet. So, if I test my game... You can see nothing happens. Even though I go all the way to the right, nothing happens. So this is like uh, the Donkey Kong games I was talking about earlier. It's just a one screen game. So let's change, change that. The first thing we'll need to do is set up our screens. Now when you scroll, you have to have a start and a finish. So a start screen and a finish screen for scroll. I'm not talking about start or, or a windscreen, but a left start screen and a right end screen for scrolling. So this is going to be my left edge for scroll and this screen is going to be my right edge for scroll now you can scroll as long as you want but i won't wouldn't recommend scrolling any further than this maybe even this because when you get to here it's complicated to continue down here so start left Start scroll left, 
finish scroll right. How do we do that? Well, let's go into our first screen up in the upper left corner. Okay, so every screen has something that's called screen info. Let's push the screen info button. This is only for this screen right here. So when I go to screen info, this is only for this screen right here. Now, I'm gonna say, say something a little confusing now. Because if this was a Donkey Kong single screen game, what I just said would be true. Screen info, this only applies for this screen. And if we go to the next screen, press screen info, this only applies to this screen. So normally that's true. However, when you're doing scrolling games, everything is read from the first screen that you start on. That means that for scrolling games, now this is only for scrolling games, the start screen, the uh, information here on our start screen, that's where you have your player, that's that um, those settings, that information will be carried on through the next screens. Even though we change something here, uh, Nestmaker won't read that information. It only reads screen info from the first screen where you have your player. So when the player spawns, that screen, that screen info will be read. And the next ones will be ignored. This only applies for scrolling games. So if you're making single screen games like uh, the Donkey Kong games we talked about, then every screen will have its own screen info. I know, this can be a little confusing. Let's not uh, make too uh, big a deal out of this. So, let's go back to the first screen. And click Screen Info. Now, if you uh, take a look up here, it says Screen Flags. Now, I just said that this was my left edge for the scrolling. So let's click left edge for scroll on this screen. Click OK. Now, please try not to be confused. I just said that on scrolling games, all screen info is ignored. And that's true, except for one thing. Let's go to the last screen here, screen number three. Let's click screen info. This is my right edge for screen. So this one is not ignored. So the left edge and right edge, those are not ignored. So let's click OK. So now we have set up screen info for this screen and we have set up screen info for this screen. This screen, we have left edge for scroll. This screen, we have right edge for scroll. That means that we can scroll from here all the way over here. And it's going to stop here. But since this is a Metroidvania game, we can scroll both ways. So remember, LR platformer that only scrolls to the right, Metroidvania, like we're doing right here, we can scroll both ways. Okay. So does it work right now? Can we scroll right now? No, unfortunately, we have to do some tiny little work, tiny little work left there. So let's take a look at our input scripts. Our input scripts moves our player and it changes his animation. We can move left and right and we can jump. So we have followed our plan so far. But we haven't told Nestmaker how we want to scroll our game. And I want Nestmaker to scroll when I press right 
or left of my D-pad, my controller. Okay, that means that we're, we're going to need some new input scripts. So, let's go to um, our input script folder over here to the left and click base 4.5 and uh, click game and platformer base and inputs. Okay, so we're going to need a few more scripts from the platform base module. Again, please try not to get confused. These scripts are a little mixed together, but it's fine. Everything's going to work fine as long as all, they're all imported to our project. So what do we need from the platformer base? Well, we're doing scrolling right now. So we need a script called do simple scroll left. So double click on do simple scroll left. We also need do simple scroll right. So click that. And we also need do stop scrolling. And let's just, uh, no, you know what? We have that already. Okay. So now let's go to our input editor. And uh, let's choose main game for game state. And this is important. For the left, for this is scrolling. Scrolling is going to happen when I hold down left on my D-pad, not press, but hold. So click on left here on D-pad and click on this button until it says hold. So when I hold left on my D-pad, I want to do a simple scroll left. Okay, let's add that. And like I said before, let's keep this tidy. So Highlight uh, the do simple scroll left over here and let's move it up together with these ones where I move the player left. So move the player left, change his animation when you press L and we hold L, we want to scroll to the left. So let's do the same thing for right. Let's click uh, away that left and click right on our D-pad. So when we hold right, we want to do a simple scroll right. Do simple scroll right. Yes, that's what we want. So let's add that, highlight it and move it up together with those other move right scripts. Move right, animation, scroll right. And let's not forget when we release left on our d-pad we want to stop scrolling we don't want the screen to keep scrolling when we release uh, when we release the d-pad and our player is left and the screen just scrolls away from him we don't want that so click left on the d-pad make sure it says release here and let's choose do stop scrolling and add script and again, let's group this together with um, the other release left over here. So, stop moving, change action to stop, and stop scrolling when re release left. Same thing for right. Click right on the D-pad, make sure it says release, and do stop scrolling, yes? Add script and just highlight it and move it up there to the other stop scripts. Okay, so does this work? Let's take a look. So what I expect to happen right now is to, uh, to be able to scroll all the way across here and I expect the screen to stop scrolling here but I also expect to be able to scroll back here without any problems. So let's see if this works. Click export and test.
So the moment of truth again. And what do you know? Our screen is scrolling. So now it's definitely starting to look like a game. And as you can see, whoops, the screen stopped scrolling when we reached the um, right edge for scroll. Now right, right edge for scroll doesn't mean that you that your character stops here. So uh, if we want to stop our player, we need to build some sort of obstacle here. Maybe uh, put a wall here or something like that. But everything's working like expected. So can I scroll back? Yes, I can. Okay, that's great. So now we have a player, animation is working, controls are working, and scrolling is working. So, this is great stuff. It's almost like it's starting to look like a real game. Okay. Well, you know what? I think that's enough for now. So let's just take another break. And when we continue, we're going to start making monsters. So for now, just take a refreshing break. And I'll see you soon.